Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, those that are watching by live stream, we watching me this morning. We're glad you are watching with us. And once again, we just want to encourage you to participate. Uh, encourage you to stand up um, and worship God with us as we worship and sing. And uh, just uh, by faith, uh, connect with us today. And, you know, the Spirit of God knows no distance. He knows no time frame. And uh, so we are glad that you are watching. We are full full of joy. Uh, Psalm 126 says this, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter. And when you don't know what else to do, just laugh, right? Amen. Just ha, ha, ha. The devil's a liar. God's on the throne. Jesus is Lord. The Holy Spirit is still moving, and we're believing that. And then it goes on, our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. And I, I believe with all my heart that God is going to turn this situation around, and the world will know that this is God. They will see that it's God. So you
Jesus. We worship and adore you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that our light has come and that we can shine your goodness, shine who you are, and shine in this place today. Everywhere we go, your presence goes with us. Hallelujah. We're rising up. Arise, shine, for our light has come. Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord has won. Though darkness may cover the earth, we are full of your glory, full of your glory. Nations are drawn to the light as we are full of your glory.
God. Well, I tell you what, go ahead and put that chorus of your love invading. I wanted to just point something out real quick. As we were singing this, I thought about this here real quickly. It's almost there. There we go. Now, now let's think about what we're singing now. You know, those of you who obviously are watching this live stream, we hope that you're engaging with us. We hope that you're worshiping with us. Because again, you know, what we're saying, we're saying it for a purpose. You know, these are not just words that just we throw up on the screen just because we want to fill in time. But let's think about this real quick. As we worship you, Jesus, what happens? So what happens as we do that, we see his love invading the earth. We see his peace invading the earth. And we see healing invading the earth. So as we think about that, and I'm going to just challenge you today, you know, there's all kinds of different uncertainty and all kinds of different things going on right now. But, you know, I believe that the world is trying, is, is watching to see how the church responds to this. And think about this now. If we would just worship Jesus, we would see these things. And if you see this list of things, now you may say, Pastor Neil, those are things that we always need in this world. You're right, we always need them. But even more right now, we need God's love invading this earth right now. We need his peace invading the earth. You know, there's all kinds of, of uncertainty, you know, toilet paper uncertainty, all kinds of different things. <laughs> but what we need is we need God's peace invading the earth. And for certainly we need God's healing invading the earth. And I love what Pastor said there. You know, we, you know, I, I mean, I'm a supporter of our president. You know, I'm not going to get political, but he made a couple of statements. And he said, you know what, we have some of the greatest minds in this world here in the United States trying to figure out this thing. But they are limited. But we serve a God that is unlimited. And so let me just remind you of that. So worship the Lord. We'll see his love invade the earth. We'll see his peace invade the earth. And we'll see his healing invade the earth. So God bless you again. Thank you so much for joining us. I know Pastor David, yeah, they're doing the, the bump right up here. I don't know if you saw that. and uh, But I know Pastor David already welcomed you. And so I just got some announcements here real quickly. Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah. anyway. But uh, I just got some announcements here. We are live streaming. And, and I know that the, the, the uh, governor has come up with a couple of different, he's extended it out to the 17th. Uh, so we're still trying to work out some different things past Wednesday, April 1st. So actually we'll have more information out to you as the time comes. And Pastor, I also thought about, you know, it has been alleged, alleged, I cannot confirm nor deny this, that the government can actually, can actually, you know, like, like law So, you know, maybe we should call it a favor to see that. Amen? If you're actually praising the Lord with us, and I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to be But uh, anyway, again, so we'll have information coming up after this. You see it up there on the screen as far as what our live streams are going to look like. Uh, but for right now, we know that we will be live streaming on uh, Wednesday as well. Wednesday, April 1st, we'll be having our live stream uh, service as well, so you can join us with that. Uh, I, you know, I know Pastor David talks about this pastor quite a bit. Pastor um, uh, t uh, Tim Gilligan from Ocala, uh, California, and I was watching his message this morning, and I'm going to encourage you, but he encouraged his people. He encouraged you to talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your family, and encourage them to watch this live stream. You know, especially those that feel like there's no hope and no peace, because that's what you're going to get here. You're going to get and And it's interesting, because we always challenge to invite people to invite somebody you know across, you know, on the other side of the world to watch the live stream. Yeah. And so we're encouraging you to do that. So if your, your family who maybe don't live in the United States, even in the world, invite them. So there's all kinds of different ways you can watch us. You can go to our website, fhccheyenne.org. You can also download our app. You can watch it there as well. On Facebook, you can watch it there. Our Roku page, or our Ro I don't know, if they, do they call it a page, or what do they call it? It's Roku channel. channel, Roku channel. You can watch it on there, and also on YouTube as well. So there's all kinds of different ways, but I encourage you to go ahead and invite uh, your friends, family, people you know all over. You know, we've got some people that we know that are in England, and I don't know what the time difference is. I can't remember. I think it's seven hours ahead five hours ahead. Thank you, Josh. But we're going to encourage them to watch it as well because, again, we want to share love, hope, and peace to the world, and we can do it that way. So just got some announcements here real quickly. Uh, let me remind you that we have corporate prayer still going on uh, on Tuesday at 530. They're still meeting here in the sanctuary to pray. Just if you are going to come to the, to the sanctuary. Oh, they're not? Okay. So no, they're not, but are we still praying on Wednesdays? Okay. Okay. They're, they're still praying, but not here in the sanctuary, so 
But on Wednesday morning at 6 a.m., the men, we're still getting together to pray. And then also we're still having corporate prayer here at the sanctuary from 11.45 a.m. to 1.45 p.m. Uh, here in the sanctuary, you can come and pray. We're practicing the social distancing that our president and our governor have asked us to do, but we can still pray, amen? We can still come together. And let me just encourage you, maybe you, you live, you're watching us from somewhere all over the world and you can't come here at 6 o'clock in the morning, men, to pray. Well, wherever you're at, no matter what the time difference is, just say, I'm going to get up and I'm going to pray for that time period there. And same thing with corporate prayer and for prayer for our nation. You can do those things as well. Uh, also, uh, there is a video on Facebook. I actually went and watched it. It makes it really easy because I'm going to talk about some different things that you can sign up for next. But you can go to our Facebook page and you can see that video of how to sign up for things uh, on our website. Of course, you know, we, we usually have sign-up. Well, we have sign-up sheets here in the foyer or in the, the information center, but you can't come here and do that, but you can sign up online. So I'm just going to make a note of a couple of things you can sign up for. First of all, our Growth Connections uh, classes that we're going to have, they're going to actually start on April 19th, not April 5th, but they're going to start on April 19th. That's the, the weekend after our governor has, has asked us to, to not meet socially or, or, you know, as a group. So April 19th, we'll start our Growth Connections. So we'll, address, we'll adjust that as far as our schedule goes, but you can still sign up for that on our website as well. So it's going to be a great time to grow, to connect. And again, you know, one of the things that I love about this course that Pastor David uh, had found to do is it, it's, uh, you have a facilitator, so it encourages different people to not only uh, to share, but also to encourage one another. So it's not your typical, you sit in a class, you have somebody up teaching, you have a facilitator, and it just encourages everybody that's there in the group to share, to share what God has done. So that's going to be really good. I'm excited about that. So that's, again, April 19th. You can sign up on our, on our uh, website, and the books are $5 a piece, and, and it's really, really good. It'll be a blessing to you. Also, we have the Camille House Ministry still going on on April 10th. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the youth are going to be overseeing the, the youth, or I'm sorry, the meal that this month or in April. And so we need your help in making cupcakes. You can sign up online to make cupcakes as well. And as you can see uh, there, uh, we need about $265 as a goal. We have 40 sewn, so we need $225 to finish up that meal right there. So you, you can sew by going online and sewing and selecting other and then putting in their uh, Kamiya house so we can go ahead and get that meal done. And everybody's asking about Easter. Guess what? Easter is still going to be here. We may not meet here in the sanctuary, but we're still going to celebrate. Amen. So we got some information that we'll be getting out to you via email and Facebook about Easter weekend. Uh, I know Pastor's got some different ideas on some things. But again, uh, this doesn't change the fact that we still, in one way or another, we're still going to celebrate that our Savior is alive. And he's alive for you. He's alive for me. Yes. And, and I tell you what, it's still something to celebrate. So no virus or nothing like that is going to change the fact that Jesus is still on the throne. And he's still the Savior of the world. So uh, we're, we'll have more information out to you here shortly on how that's all going to look. Pastor David, come on up. Amen. Well, praise God. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Amen. We're glad you're watching with us. And uh, uh, we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings and so we have many different ways that, uh, as we've been encouraging you, that you can give. Um, and before I forget, they got it up there right now, you can connect with us through the uh, Bible app on the Uversion. Uh, they've downloaded the notes on there, so you just go to uh, FHC or Family Harvest Church, and you'll be able to follow along. It's got the notes, the outline, and, uh, and the scriptures as well. Um, but just, uh, just want to encourage you to continue to connect in this way. And uh, many different ways that you can give. Of course, you can text to uh, 7977, and then you download our app, which that's probably one of the best ways you can do uh, because you can do recurring on, on the app as well. And then also you can go to our website. So we encourage you, or you can bring, I know some have done that this way. Uh, they brought their offerings in, and you can put it in one of the uh, gray boxes, either the one in the sanctuary or the one that is out in the hall. So we appreciate you uh, staying connected that way. You know, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I was just meditating on this this morning. I know I on Wednesday nights I'm talking about staying under uh, seven hours or get you over. And in Deuteronomy, the first 14 verses talks about the blessing. And, and there's a great blessing when we follow God, and we, when we obey God. And uh, you know, sometimes people say, well, that's old covenant. But, but the Bible says this in Galatians 3.13, that Jesus 
Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And it's not works that it's, it's when we give of our tithes and offerings, however we do that, when we give our tithes and offerings, what we are doing is we are inviting God to get involved in all cases. We are inviting the supernatural presence uh, of God, the supernatural action of God to get in. And so Moses was reminding the Israelites that they did that. He said, you'll be the, not the dog, you'll be above and up and the lender, not the borrower, and such. And it was the saying, God's going to get involved. God is going to get involved in your finances. God's going to get involved in your livelihood. And I don't know about you, I'm not involved in everything you do. I want him involved in finances. I want him in my marriage. I want him involved in, in, in all that I do in my life. And, and so I give it and realize that. You can go to an offering. It's not sometimes say, well, you know, the church just wants money and such like that. Why well, we realize that, that as you give, yes, we understand it, it takes money to, to run all of this, but but we, as Paul, want it to be added to your account and, and such, and so that heaven can get involved in, in it. And there's no better way. You know, as we've looked, and, you know, Pastor Gilsler, we shared some things, you know, and we've talked about this, you know, the, the economy is going to be up and down. Uh, that's just, it's always been that way. And, and you know, if you, uh, it's good to invest and all that, but don't just put your trust to just in your investments. Right. Right. Amen. God's economy is all the way up. God's economy is on the increase. You cannot think of what uh, it says in Genesis that Isaac suffered in the time of famine and he reached a hundredfold return. You know, that's a strength. And so when we give up our time, when we give up our fear and all our life, we appreciate the and, and each and every one as you give and there many different ways you can see that uh, second act in that way and watch God during this time watch God just supernaturally meet all of your needs yes. amen yes. you know we joke around about multiplying the toilet paper but multiplying <laughs> your food multiplying whatever it is that you need that, that he will do that he's the same God that he was when we read in the Bible and, and when we put our trust and our hope in him, we know that he will not disappoint. Now, we have a, uh, if you're new to Family Harvest Church and you're watching it today, we believe in speaking over our seed. We believe in our words. And so on. this morning, <clears throat> this is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow it because I love God and want to see Family Harvest Church Continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. Building families that are happy, stable, fruitful, and blessed. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for many opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are opening because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you for all those that are connecting, Father God, through live stream. We praise you, Father. I thank you their needs are being met. Father, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and mentally, Lord God. I thank you that you're invading their homes this morning, Lord God, with your love with your peace, with your grace, with your life, Father God. Father God, I say, protect us, God. No distance. You say, you are the same God. You are the same God. You are the same God. Please, no, Father God. We honor you. God, thank you. God bless you over them and their households. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. It says in Psalm 92 that no place can come to your dwelling. I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you give your charge over us. Father, because we trust you and we know your name. So we honor you today, Father. We plead the blood. And we thank you, Father, that there's power in the blood of Jesus. And so, Father, we give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Why don't you stand with us 
and, and worship God with all your heart, with all your being this morning.
praise and all the glory because worthy is your name yes. hallelujah and lord we know that you and your name are the same we just give you glory and honor and praise in jesus mighty name amen amen well those that are here in the sanctuary you may be seated and uh praise god let me just encourage you know we can pray uh uh you know, speaking against this virus and speaking to it to die we have authority in this time you know as children or as children of God, we are citizens of two places. We are citizens of heaven, the Bible tells us, but we're also citizens of this earth. And in the United States of America, we are citizens of heaven. And so we have the right, not, not just to be proud, but Jesus, when he left this earth, he gave us authority. And that's very interesting. Luke chapter 9, and I posted this, or we had this posted earlier this week. Luke chapter 9, Jesus gave authority to his disciples. Now, they weren't born again yet. They didn't have the Spirit of God living on the inside of them yet. Yet, He gave them power to heal all manner of diseases and, and to cast them. We have that same power today. Now, uh, I know some are saying this is judgment from God and, and such, but we know that sickness and disease doesn't come from God. It comes from the enemy. And, and so we understand that. But after, you, after you, we pray about it, then we need to give thanksgiving to God. We need to rejoice and thank Him. That's what faith does. Faith uh, thanks God before the, he, we see the answer in the natural. That's what rejoicing does. And so I encourage you to do that. So I'm gonna, uh, this is part two uh, of the joy of being secure. And um, uh, I, I put a subtitle on the antivirus worry. You know, devices, phone or iPad or tablet. Viruses on those, and and there's a purpose in that. It's to prevent your computer or other kind of alternative from becoming things. Well, there's an antivirus for work, and and it's found here in Philippians chapter chapter uh, four. And you know, here again, Paul's writing this from uh, he's writing this from prison, and I find it very am amazing. He talks about rejoicing and uh, and such, but he gives us. He gives us a, a clue. He gives us something that we can go to. And in fact, that's where we have to run. No matter what, what's going on in the world, in our life, we always need to be running to the Word and being established in the Word of God. And because anxiety will rob you of your joy, fear will rob you of your faith. And, and whatever you're feeding, that's what's going to grow. And, and so if you're feeding your faith, and we feed our faith by uh, meditating and reading the Word of God, because it's God speaking to you. It's the word of God to you. And in fact, in 1 Peter chapter 1, when, when Peter was writing there, you know, think about this. Peter, who was up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, and, and he exalts the word of God over that moment that he had up there. And a lot of times people are looking for this spectacular, and they're missing uh, so much because they're not in the word. And, and, and so I want to encourage you, we talked about this, double up on your intake of the Word of God. You know, at night, before you go to bed, read a song or something that just bring peace to your heart and meditate on it. And, and, and so it'll rob you. Uh, if you're listening to the world all the time, it's going to rob you. But if you listen to God and His Word, it'll put faith in your heart. And so here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I'll be real honest, I think that's where a lot of people miss. Seeing the answer to prayer is they don't take that time. We talked about this last week, with thanksgiving. It goes on, and the peace of God, which surpasses, let's start again, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, 
Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Verse 9, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So let's just uh, review. Paul gives four things here. And the first thing he does is he diagnoses the problem. What's the problem? Well, worry. He says, don't be anxious about anything. And, you know, we talked about last week, 92% of what people worry about it never comes to pass. And so it's a fruit, fruit, fruitless exercise. Don't worry. Jesus commanded us over and over, commanded his disciples, don't worry. Uh, somebody a lot smarter than I am figured this out, that there's 365 uh, fear nots in the, in the word of God. I'm not sure what you do in leap year. I guess you just add an extra one. But 365 fear nots in the word of God. And so he diagnoses the problem. Now, sometimes people say, well, why would you diagnose the problem? So you know how to battle it. So you know how to come against it. So you know what to do when, you know, it, faith doesn't mean you deny the problem. Faith means you, you know you have a God that's bigger than the problem. Amen. So he diagnoses the problem, and then he prescribes, number two, he prescribes a panacea or a cure. All right? That's what panacea means. I had to come up with three, four Ps, you know. Anyways, a panacea, a cure, uh, a remedy. And, and what is it? It's prayer. But, but let me just share this. You pray, but you need to pray the right way. Uh, you know, you start off your prayers. We talked about this last week. Don't just start off with your petitions. Don't just start off with your requests. You need to spend some time in worshiping God. Before you do anything else, take some time. Jesus put it this way. When, when you pray, declare, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That word hallowed means separated for praise and glory and honor. And, and in the Psalms, it says, we will come into his gates with what? With thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Because what does that do? You're inviting God into your situation. You're, you're, you're helping your mind to become calm and such. And, and so we put it this way last week. In, uh, um, in nothing, be anxious. In everything, pray. And in anything, give thanks. All right, and anything. In other words, be don't be careful. You need to be prayerful. All right, and and of course it's not. You know, you might have times of specific prayer, but throughout the day you can talk to God. You can communicate with God. It doesn't have to be out out of your mouth. God hears your heart, and you can speak out of your heart. Now there's times that we are to verbalize our prayers, but you know if you're in a place of work. If you're in a, you know, when I uh, was director of the Bible school years ago, and uh, well, we'd have students get in trouble at work because they were witnessing, and they'd get upset. Well, you're not going to do what God's telling me to do. And so we said, well, on your break, or on your time off, but if the manager asks you, and I can remember talking to some of the managers of some of these places, they were Christian, and says, we're not against witnessing, just don't do it on our time, right? You, you, you are owed, uh, you owe that person that time. And such, and so, uh, so you can ver you can quietly. When I was when I went back to Bible school, and and I worked at a grocery store, I would I would pray. I would pray softly under under my breath and and in in tongues, or just thanking God and just praising Him. See, we we can do it all all the time. It doesn't just have to be a formal time that we pray, and it's important to do that. And then thirdly, Paul recommends a program. Okay, recommends a program. And the program is this, right thinking and right actions. Okay, right thinking and right actions. Now, you know, we have Jeff, you know, and he, he works out, and I'm sure he has a program. The, uh, you know, uh, whatever, you know, I know when I used to work out with weights, you know, and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when I was in college, those were, uh, uh, well, actually, we just Monday and Wednesday, we did upper body. Tuesdays and Thursdays were a lower body. And so we had a certain program that we followed and such uh, that they had predetermined or, uh, you know, weight loss or whatever it may be. And, and it seems sometimes, I'm not sure why in the Christian world, when it comes to spiritual things, and I think it's part of because of the, we, we have that sovereignty of God mix in there, that if God wants to do it, God will do it. And no, we have a responsibility. Now, it's not law, okay? We don't get under bondage over it. But, but there are certain things that we can do 
scripturally speaking, that'll help us to overcome fear, to overcome anxiety, and, and it's right thinking and right actions. And in Philippians 4, 8, we'll come back to this later, but at the end, Paul says, think on these things or meditate on these things. So ask your question, what have you been meditating on? Right? I, I, every day you check in Facebook, you know, like one person said, you know, you need to open this book before you open Facebook, right? What are you checking? What, what are you listening to? You got to get on the news and listen to the news all the time and encourage you. Nothing wrong with being, knowing what's going on, but, but if, if that's all you're meditating on, if that's all you're thinking on, you're, it's going to produce fear in your heart. Right? And people say, well, Pastor, you've got to be practical. We've got to know what's going on. Well, I, I, I don't see that. You know, give me chapter and verse for being practical. Okay? I know we are to be wise. All right? And yes, we are to be practical. But, but some people, they kind of, that, that becomes their whatever, their mantra. Well, I've got to be practical. I know what's going on. And so it's not if it's putting fear in your heart. Not if it's causing you to be afraid. So we have to have right thinking. And we need to have right actions. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks, so is he. Okay? So you've got to guard your heart. You need, to, you need to guard what's going in. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. The, we've talked about this a few times. Take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. How do you do that? When those thoughts of fear say, no, fear, you're not going to have control of my, of my mind. And find scriptures that apply to that. You know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper or succeed. I, I, in righteousness I shall be established. Uh, and fear shall not come near me. See, we speak the word. Why? Because the word of God is alive. The word of God is more powerful. And it's more sharper than any two-edged sword. So, so go to Philippians 4, 8. Let's read that again. Finally, brethren. And again, this is not gender specific. Okay. Finally, brethren. You know, in the Bible it talks about brothers or brethren. It's talking about those in the body of Christ. Male and female. Whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. So let's just look at uh, four of these uh, real quick. So whatever, number one, whatever things are true. In other words, focus on Jesus, right? Focus on God and his word. Get your mind focused on however you imagine. You know, our imagination is a very powerful thing that God has given to us. So we begin to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 48, 9, I'm just taking a portion out of it. It says, we have thought of your loving kindness. We have thought of your loving kindness. So I'm going to take time. When, you know, I'm going to think on uh, whatever's true. Well, what is true? God is true. Right? Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And so I'm going to meditate on the truth. Now, there might be things that are true, but there's a higher truth, and that's the Word of God. Right? This virus is true. It's a fact. But there's a higher law. It's the Word of God. There's a higher truth. It's God's Word. And so that's why we meditate. We think on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, and, and we, guard, we gird our loins, as Paul talks about in, in, in Ephesians chapter 6. Very first thing he tells, uh, when we put on the armor, the very first thing, gird your loins about with truth. Why? Because it holds everything up, mm -hmm. right? You know, I have a belt on. I don't know if it holds my pants up or not, you know. Years ago, I can remember, uh, uh, I can remember, I, I still have, I don't wear them, but suspenders, because I'd lost a lot of weight, and, and so actually I had some, uh, had expanded a little bit, and so I was no longer wearing 36 waist. I was wearing 30, had been wearing 38 waist pants, and so I'd lost some weight. Well, my belt, you know, I couldn't cinch it tight enough, and, and so I had suspenders. But I wore the belt just for looks. And somebody said to me, say, Pastor, how can you preach on faith if you don't know what, ha what holds your pants up? Yeah, good point, right? And I said, well, you wouldn't want me, you know, whatever, you know, type of thing. So, so focus on the Lord. You gird, gird your loins, right? Because on everything else, the righteousness, the, the everything else, your sword, it, it, the, the truth. See, if you got the truth and you know what the truth says, then you can speak the truth. And that's how you battle the enemy. So number one, meditate on whatever things are true. Number two, whatever things are true noble. 
The word noble means possessing outstanding or excellent qualities. Well, I can't think of anybody better than God <laughs> that, that has excellent qualities and outstanding qualities. And I'm going to think about these things. And I just you know, listed a few. Compassionate. I'm going to think about it as compassion. Uh, my, my wife, I was singing a song to my wife this morning. She goes, I think it needs a different tune. And, and uh, she was just teasing me, but an updated tune, you know. But uh, I, I don't know, Ecclesiastes 3, 23 and 20, 22 and 23 came to me. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are, uh, uh, are new, or his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God's mercy, God's compassionate, right? They never cease. They never give up. And so I'm going to think about his mercy, how merciful it was for me. You know, that's just a good thing to meditate. I know we aren't to dwell in the past, but it's good to think about his mercy towards you that, that enabled you to become born again. He sent Jesus Christ to this earth, die for your, your sins and, and my sins and die for the sins of the whole world. So I think, oh, God, you're so merciful. You're so compassionate. I was lost in my sins. I was, you know, like Brother Norval used to say, I was like a goose in a, in a snowstorm. Now, we have geese up here, so I guess they don't get the memo they're supposed to fly south yeah. during, the, during the winter, right? But he used to talk about that, like a, you know, like a cow in a new gate or whatever, whatever it may be, right? Kind of joke around about that. So I'm going to think, I'm going to think about him as my counselor. That's a noble quality. He's my counselor. Jesus, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. One of the definitions for Holy Spirit or, or paraclete is counselor. I can go to him. Uh, I'm going to think about him as my helper, right? Praise God that God's given me a wonderful wife that's my, my helper, but you know what? Uh, she, she is limited in what she can help me. She's a wonderful helper, but she's limited. I've got a supernatural helper that I can go to. When I don't know what to do, when I don't know, you know, a direction or whatever, guess what? The Holy Spirit's my counselor and my helper. He will show me, right? He will help me. He's kind. You know, if your view of God is of a harsh, vengeful, get back kind of a, a God, then, then you need to, I encourage you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because Jesus said this, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus was very compassionate. Jesus was very kind. And so we think about his kindness. And we think about how loving he is. Meditate on these things. How, how mighty he is. <laughs> now, some of these old songs from the charismatic, you know, mighty, mighty, mighty is the Lord our God, mighty in the midst of thee. You make up songs. I didn't make that one up, but you can, you can make up songs. And, see, it's important that we, we dwell on these things and, and, we, and we meditate on these things and speak these things out. He's my defender. He's my life giver. He's strong. He's a champion. And so those are things that are noble. Then whatever things are just. And, and just means proper or right, but it also means fair. Okay? Aren't you glad God's fair? <laughs> Aren't you glad? You know, the psalmist put it this way, and then Paul quoted it in Romans 4. He said, blessed is the person or blessed is the man who God does not count his sins against him. God's fair. And throughout the Word of God, and we see it spoken a couple of times, Peter spoke about it, it's implied different times. God's no respecter of, uh, of people. He's no respecter of places. He's no respecter of times. And we need to remember that. You know, sometimes we look at the people in the, in the Bible and we think they were superhero type people. We think they were superhuman. But no, they, they, they were just human beings. I love what it says in James, that Elijah was a man with like passions, just like you and I. In fact, he got depressed <laughs> when, when uh, Jezebel was chasing him. He went and hid. He ran away. And he's like, God, you know, no one else. God, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one that's praying, God. Right? Sometimes people can be that way. God, I'm the only one that's praying. Uh, what did God say? I've, I've reserved 7,000 that have not bowed their knee. And so, so we think God's a fair God, and, and he's the same. You know, I was just thinking about the miracles that Jesus did. But even the Old Testament, God, God, you know, did mighty things for his people. And guess what? They weren't always perfect. 
<laughs> in fact, a lot of times they, they really missed it. And God in his mercy, God in his grace, God in his loving kindness, when they cried out to him, what did he do? Well, sorry, guys. No, he was just. He was a just God. He was a fair God. And so I think about those things. And then lastly, number four, whatever things are pure. Whatever things are pure. Um, the, the word pure means free of things that weaken or pollute. Free of things that weaken or, or pollute. But it also means free from roughness or harshness. Okay? Free from roughness or harshness. And, and we see it spoken about Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. It talks about that he, he speaks of himself, that he's gentle or lowly, of, of, right? He's humble. And when we look to him, in Matthew 12, 20, it says, A bruised reed he will not break. A smoking flax he will not quench. What does that mean? He's not going to beat you when you're down. He's not going to, you say, you know. Now, he might speak, you know. Sometimes people think kindness and gentleness that you don't speak uh, directly and you don't speak forcibly. But it's always in a, you know, if God, if the Lord Jesus by the Holy Spirit speaks to you about something, it's always going to be with kindness and gentleness, right? It's always because he wants the best for you. When God brings correction, whether it's through preaching or teaching of the Word of God, or as you read the Word of God, guess what? He always gives you a way out. He doesn't leave you hanging. He doesn't say, well, you know, too bad. You messed up. No, he gives you a way out. But he does it in a gentle and kind way. In fact, as the good shepherd, he will lead you. As the great shepherd, he's not going to say, well, here's what you do, but sorry, you're on your own. That's what God's grace is all about. Now I can not only, will he help me, but he'll lead me. I love, you know, I've been, uh, Rick Renner, uh, this, this year I've been doing his Sparkling Gems 2, and, and I actually I don't think it's in this one, but it was in Sparkling Gems 1, and Romans 8, and it's verse 26, and he talks about the Holy Spirit helps us. And I love the way he puts it, because sometimes people think, well, if I got myself into this trouble, I've got to get myself out. And he says, no, the, even if you've dug the ditch, the Holy Spirit will get in that ditch with you and help you get out. Amen. That's good news. Amen. Amen. That's how gracious and loving our Heavenly Father is. So we think upon these things. And then the second part, so that's right thinking. And we need to have right actions. Okay? We need to have right actions. In uh, Philippians 4, verse 9, this is how they amplified. Practice what you have learned. Practice what you have learned. Now, we have different ones in here. I know that we're in, involved in uh, sports. And, you know, we used to make this statement, you know, practice makes perfect. And I remember uh, uh, my youngest daughter played the trumpet. And, and uh, she played uh, up through her ninth grade year. And I can remember the high school band director saying this. He says, it's not just practice, but perfect practice makes perfect. And I thought about that. Now, we're not going to be perfect in everything we do, but there was a point that he was trying. It's not just practicing. You know, I, in third grade and sixth grade, I took piano. And so I would have to practice. Well, if I didn't practice properly, you know, we had 30 minutes every night or every afternoon that you had to practice. Well, if my mom was home and she heard you, and if you weren't practicing properly, you had to redo it. So you might as well do it right the first time. Because if you didn't do it right the first time, you're going to have to do it again. And so Paul says here, he says, practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it, and the God of peace will be with you. So practice what you're doing. Practice what you're hearing. Put it into practice. You know, it says in James, it's not the hearer that is blessed, it's the doer of the Word of God. James chapter 1. So be a doer of God's Word. When you hear the Word of God, begin to put it in practice in your life. It's something you never, if you've never done before. And then begin to put it in practice in your life. It's, if it's things that you have done, then, then revisit those things. Right? And I know that... Um, you know, they'll, you know, they talk about golfers and such, and they'll go out and, and, you know, they hit the driving range before they play, but then if they've been hitting the ball wrong or something, you know what they do? They go back out and they figure out what they were doing wrong. What are they doing? They're practicing. 
trying to get rid of whatever habit it might be or whatever whatever they were doing wrong. They they go back out and they practice. And you know, I, th- I, I just, again, find it interesting. Sometimes in the church world, it's like, wow, you know, and I think it's, again, because we the sovereignty of God, if God wants to do it. No, God works with us, and he works in us. And so we practice. And throughout, throughout the epistle, Paul encourages us to, to live right and to have right actions. In 2 Timothy 1.13, Paul tells Timothy, hold fast the pa- pattern of sound words. Hold fast. The, in other words, do, do what I'm telling you to do. 2 Timothy 3.14, continue in the things that you have learned. You know, John 8, 32, a lot of people know that or have probably quoted, you know, I shall uh, know the truth and the truth shall set me free. Well, go back to what Jesus says, if you continue in these things, right? It's not just quoting a verse. If you continue in these things. First Timothy four twelve. be an example. Paul, Timothy, it was, uh, Paul was telling Timothy, don't let people look down on you because you're young. Be an example in conduct and word. And then in Ephesians uh, 4 1 says we are to live a life worthy of the divine calling. And so so when, when we're living contrary to the word of God, we take ourselves out from under the blessing of God. And again, it's not a work, it's not, not talking about works to, to get your to earn your way to heaven. But there are works that we are to do here upon this earth. And these things will help you. Okay? So right thinking and right actions. And number number four, then Paul gives us a promise. Number four, his protection and his presence. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. <laughs> Here again, as we put these things in, as we meditate on these things, the promise of his protection, uh, verse seven, notice what it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. God's peace will guard and mount as a garrison over your heart. Now, the word guard there means to, to be a watcher in advance. Aren't you glad? Think about that. <clears throat> you ever thrown, anybody ever thrown a surprise party for anybody? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do you do? You have a watcher, right? You have somebody somewhere that's, you know, shh, shh, you know, he's coming or she's coming or, you know, get ready or whatever it may be. You got somebody that, that is watching out in advance so that you can surprise. Well, God doesn't surprise us, but, but the point is he, he's out there watching in advance ahead of us and he's guarding. And that word garrison, had, it, it's very interesting. I looked it up and it, it means so many different things, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a group of uh, uh, maybe 500 men. And, and, and it's just kind of interesting, like, uh, how different meanings it has come to mean, but it initially meant to defend or to protect. And so God's out in front of us. He's guarding, yeah. right? He, he's that protector. He's, he's mounted a garrison in front of us. And not just in front of us. You know, a few weeks ago, I, I, I encouraged, if you hadn't had an opportunity to go, and, uh, you know, the blessing by Kerry Job and Kerry Carnes. And, and I love that song. It talks about, the, talks about God's, God's presence being around you and before you, or before you and behind you and all around you and on the inside of you. Glory to God, his protection. And so it's mounted as a garrison. So God will guard your heart in advance. Why? Because he sees things that are coming down the road. All right? We, we've talked about this different ones. You know, this didn't catch God off guard. You know, Jesus didn't fall off the throne and say, Father, where did that come from? And, and, and I'm not being sacrilegious, I'm not being, but I think sometimes I think, wow, you know, where was God? God's still here. <laughs> God hasn't left the building, so to speak. Amen. And not just this physical building, but this building right here, the temple of the Holy Spirit. God has not left it. And so he will guard your heart. He will, you know, hem in your heart and, and mind with his peace. He will hem in. Praise God. That is awesome. And then we have the promise of his presence. Notice verse 9. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, we, sometimes we focus on the word peace. Notice what it says, the God 
Everybody said God. God. I didn't hear you out there in, in <laughs> live stream land, right? God. God. And the God of peace. Not just his peace, but the God of peace will be with you. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Shammah. Yes, he He's the Lord that's ever present. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. You know, sometimes people, and we can get kind of religious, all of us, myself included, we, you know, God's here. Well, yeah, God is here. But guess what? When you walk out of, you know, when you walk out of a place of worship, what we call house of worship, he doesn't stay behind. He goes with us because he's in us. And his presence, he never, you know, leaves us. I know, and, and let me just encourage you, get rid of that, that old thinking, that stinking thinking. You know, and talks to the old covenant, his presence will leave you. No, he says, I will never leave you. Amen. Hallelujah. I will never forsake you. Yeah, but, Pastor. Yeah. Sheep follow goats, but. <laughs> I'm serious, people. Yeah, but, Pastor. No, no, what does the word say? You know, sometimes people, I, I, I find it interesting why people always want to go back under the Old Testament. I was visiting with somebody the other day, and they were talking about this. And, you know, people to explain what's going on in our world. Well, look at Job. Well, yeah, look at Job. And I find it interesting. They talk about all the afflictions that Job went through, losing his family, losing his cattle, losing his house, you know, and all this. But they forget to mention <laughs> That at the end of the story, God restored back to him double. Yep. And then people go around, well, I'm just like Job. Well, theologians and people a lot smarter than me said that, that what Job went through only lasted about nine months. But some people, they, they're like, they've been like Job for nine years mm -hmm. or 19 years or whatever it is. And, and they forget the last part of the story. You know, like Steve Harvey says, now for the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be like Job, then you need to expect double. Amen. Right? And people, you know, they, they always go back under. Why, why would we go back under? But Hebrews says that this covenant that we're under today is better. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to go under something that's worse? Yes. Yes. You have Jesus, you know, and they won't deny Jesus. God did miracles. Yes, God did miracles in the Old Testament. And then we come over in the New Testament, and God, all, when the apostles died, all of a sudden God stopped. Why? <laughs> Where do we get that theology from? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes because we try to explain, or maybe it's trying to cope. I don't know. But guess what? We have a better, better covenant with better promises. Yeah. And if Jesus healed, and Jesus performed miracles. In, in, in the time that he was, guess what? He's still the same today. Mm -hmm. He has not changed. And so, I don't know how I got over all that. You're talking about his presence. But, but it's the same thing. Because people in Old Testament scripture, that they take out of context, you know, and take not your presence from me. Well, in the New Testament, he promises. In Romans 8, 15, it says this. See, because not only is God with us, he's in us. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father, or Abba, Abba, Father, Father. Hallelujah. He lives on the inside of us. Yeah. And then in Hebrews chapter 13, 6, and I want to read it, it says, For he, God, So I'm going to take the word of man. I'm going to take the word of God. I don't know about you. I'm going to take the word of God. What does God say? <laughs> you know, if, if you know, if you went somewhere, let's say you went to the bank. Well, you know, uh, use illustration. Uh, mortgage rates drop, so we refinance because it cut back, and then we just kept paying more, or we're paying more on it to pay our mortgage off. But with the interest rates having dropped, so. It'd be kind of silly, uh, Pastor Linda and I, to go back to our mortgage lender and say, you know, we want to pay it at this higher interest rate. Uh -huh. yeah. 
You know, this is the contract we signed. And they'd be like, well, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Kibben, you're kind of silly because, you know, you're getting, you're getting, you know, a, a, a 1% less on your interest rates. It's going to save you over the life of your loan. You know, why would you want to go back under that old contract? Well, no, we just, we like the old one better. Uh, you know, they'd, they'd be looking at you like, what in the world? What planet did you come from? Where have you been? You know, type of thing. So we signed a new contract, yeah. lowering our interest rate, a better contract. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So why do I want to keep going back under? Yeah, but you know, this is what it, what it says. No, no, go, you know. Spend the majority of your time. Now, we can learn from the Old Testament, but spend the majority of your time in the New Testament. Yeah. Meditating on it, studying. Find out what your rights and privileges are. Hallelujah. Yeah. He goes on. <laughs> For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give, up, give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not. That's pretty emphatic. In any degree, leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you, assuredly not. Hallelujah. So we take comfort, and we're encouraged, and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I'm not seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified what man or sickness or dizzy, what anything else that comes along, I will not be alarmed. That's why I go to the Word. That's why I go and I meditate on the Word. I saturate my mind with the Word. Amen. I'm not saying it doesn't try to come. I'm not saying it doesn't try to knock on the door. But guess what? God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never relax my hold on you. I will praise God. Amen. Yeah. Promise of his protection yeah. and the promise of his presence. Now I can hear somebody saying, well, what if we sin? God doesn't leave you. You've broken fellowship with him, but God doesn't leave you. Right. Well, you know, David said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. He was under the old covenant. God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come to this side of the cross. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come over onto this side where the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So what's the problem? Problem is worry. What's the cure? Pray, but pray the right way. What's the program? Think right and do right. Be Dudley, do right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> right? Think right and do right. Right thinking, right actions. And then what's the promise? His protection and his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just lift those of you in here, here at home watching or whatever, wherever you may be, just lift your hands. Father, we just honor you and we praise you. Lord, we thank you for this promise that we have in your word today. Lord, it's for today. And Father God, I thank you. Those watching, those listening, Father God, wherever they may be, I thank you, Lord, your peace. I pray for your peace to come into their home, even as we said, peace invading the earth, Father. I come against fear again, because Lord, you said, Lord God, we will not fear or dread or be terrified. Why? Because you're with us. You're in us. And so we praise you and honor you for that peace. We honor you for your presence, Lord God. Oh, we just magnify you, Lord Jesus. And as we sang this morning, worthy is your name. And Lord, I pray for those that maybe right now that are very anxious, that come against anxiety in the name of Jesus. I break your power in Jesus' name. Lord, those that may be afraid for a loved one or are concerned for a friend, Father, Father, we, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus. We will not be, live in dread. We will not be terrified in the name of Jesus. We boldly say, we boldly say, hallelujah, we boldly and confidently say, I will not fear or dread. Father, if there's any
be this ministering to hearts, ministering to minds. Lord, if there's any out there that think they've done too much wrong that, that you can't forgive them, Father, I just pray you administer to their hearts that Jesus took it all, took all our sin, took all our faults, took all our mistakes upon himself so that you and I could walk free. So I pray for you the, today. I pray that you would come to know this Father who loves you so much that he gave his son to die for you and pay the penalty for your sin. And if you're watching today and you would like to commit your life to Christ, I want you to pray this with me. And I'm going to have those that are here today to, to, to pray it out loud. But I want you to pray this prayer. And, and, and as you do, believe that when you do this, Jesus will come and take control of your life. And then let us know. Let us know this morning. If you need healing, we want to pray with you and we want to believe God for you. If, if there's anything you need, if you would let us know, we won't we want to pray. So say this. Say, Heavenly Father, come to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. For inviting to have a relationship with you. Thank you. Sir, to die for my sin. I believe that he is. I believe that he died for me and he was raised on the third day that I might have right standing with my God. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. I recognize that I need a Savior and I recognize that Jesus is that Savior. So today, Jesus, take control of my life. I invite you into my heart and make your home. I thank you for peace, for joy. Now have eternal life. I declare if you said that and you believe the heart of the body. And let us know what God's in your life. Again, if you need prayer, uh, and we want to pray. And as Pastor Gill said, uh, there's going to talk to the whole staff for Easter uh, because we want to be able to connect with you. What a wonderful and powerful uh, day as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So be believing with us and just uh, creative ways and ways that we can better connect with you. So hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, if you're at home, stand to your feet. Next week is pajama day. No, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we love you guys. And we appreciate you so much. And we thank you. Uh, I know many uh, have been connecting with us. We thank you for that. And uh, we are here for you as well. And I encourage you, if you don't have our app, if you're on Facebook, uh, I've been sending this scripture out every day just with an encouraging word and such like that. So I encourage you to get on there and just uh, so you can see that and you can be encouraged. All right? Father, I just pray. I pray for not only the, those in this room. I pray for those, Father, watching today. And Lord, I thank you for ministering to them that you are the God that never leaves, never forsakes. Thank you, Father, you guard your heart, their hearts with your peace. You, you go out before them. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' wonderful and mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, bump someone's elbows at home or whatever it may be. God bless you guys. We love you and we'll be seeing you soon. Amen.